Dear participants, welcome to the Pitching A Forum Sustainability 3.0 Pitching Session Energy Generation Efficiency and mono, mono, Monitoring. Sorry, my name is Victoria Pavlova. Hello, everybody. Here is Denitsa Deneva as well. Today, we are going to be your moderators for this session. Invest Horizon is an acceleration program. Uh, financed and promoted by the European Commission and Eureka. We, Tektur, are the lead partner together with the rest of the partners, which are BPI France, Meta, BWCon, Eura, EBN, and ESF Business School. Now, before we continue, I would like to announce some housekeeping rules. The first one is that we are recording this meeting, so if anyone doesn't agree with being recorded, please write so in the chat. Uh, second one is to please rename yourself with name, surname, and company, so we have a better idea who is here in the room with us. The next one is to uh, keep uh, your camera on all the time so that you can shorter the distance, but to keep your microphone off unless you're invited to speak. And of course, if you have any questions or comments, please write, uh, please use the chat functionality and ask them there. This is uh, more or less the program for today. Uh, we are almost finished with the opening. We will continue now with the investors' introductions, where each investor will have 30 seconds for introduction. Then we will continue with the pitching session, where five companies will pitch for uh, each will each company will pitch for five minutes, and we will have four minutes for questions and answers. And then we are going to. Uh, move to the end of the forum session. Now I would like to invite the expert jury members for the session. The first one is Arthur. Hi Arthur, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi Victoria, sure. Um, my name is Arthur, I'm based in Zurich and I'm with Kineo Finance. We're not a traditional equity investor, but instead we finance assets from five to 50 million. Anything that has to do with hardware is totally down our alley. Pleased to meet you all. Thank you for the introduction. Now I would like to invite John from Sarsia Seed. Hello, everybody. Uh, Sarsia Seed is an early stage venture fund of 100 million euros based in Bergen on the west coast of Norway. Uh, we have two funds with 25 companies in total. Uh, we have a technology centered, high risk, high reward strategy, and one of our best performers have returned 45x on a ticket of 2 million euros. Uh, in the portfolio, we have IoT companies within power grid monitoring, aquaculture, asset protection and corrosion management, and fluid flow. Uh, and we also have other investments in trading platforms for guarantees of origin, electrical car infrastructure, and power sales. Looking forward to the session. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Now I would like to invite Maximilian from Hightech Grunden Funds Management to introduce himself. Sure, uh, thank you for the invitation. Um, I represent Hightech Hunderfonds, uh, a fund based in Germany that invests uh, also outside and across uh, Europe. We're probably one of the largest seed investors with a uh, short of 600 companies uh, in the portfolio. And um, we typically invest in early stage startups um, that are younger than three years. and. Uh, in a broad a range of different segments and sectors. And so we're very excited to be here today, especially myself, because I'm also an energy enthusiast in that sense. Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, Willem, would you like to go next? Thank you, Victoria. Willem Bulthuis. Um, I'm not a real investor here, but um, I am helping B2B startups worldwide to find and get in touch with the right investors, but especially through my company, Corporate Ventures Advisory, I'm helping B2B startups to find lead customers and get uh, going with lead, paying lead customers. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. I see that Alberto is also here. Hi, Alberto. Nice to see you again this week. Uh, we don't hear you. If you could please uh, unmute yourself. Hello. Hi. Yes, I'm Alberto. I'm Brian, a general partner of Real VC Capital. We are based here in, uh, in Italy and we are a business angel fund. So we invest in pre seed and seed uh, ventures. We have made up to date uh, 22 investments in less than uh, five years. And we invest uh, mainly in uh, clean tech companies. 
Thank you for the introduction. Kaisa, would you like to go next? Thank you, Victoria. Hi, everyone. My name is Kaisa Johansson, and I am representing ETF today. Uh, so ETF uh, stands for the Environmental Technologies Fund, and we are a London-based venture capital who are focusing on investing in exciting environmental tech and climate tech startups across Europe. Uh, we were founded in uh, 2006, and we're one of the longest standing uh, clean tech uh, VCs in Europe. So very excited to see the companies today. Thank you for the introduction. Elizabeth, would you like to go next? Yeah, thank you very much. Hi, everybody. I am Elizabeth. I am representing B2B Partners today, and I am part of the Industrial Technology Fund within B2B Partners. It's a European venture capital fund with 500 million assets under management. And the partners from our fund have a long history in investing in sustainable electricity generation, starting with solar 20 years ago, um, also in data analytics for wind and recently in uh, more, um, yeah, more in modern ways like waste, heat, recycling, etc. I'm looking forward to uh, hearing the pitches today. Thank you. And Marius, would you like to go next? Yes. Um, I am Marius. I'm representing WeVenture. WeVenture is a um, spin off of a family office doing um, seed investments in climate tech startups. And um, yeah, looking forward to the pitches. Thank you for the introduction. I hope I haven't missed anyone. So if I have missed uh, some of the Zoom members, please feel free to unmute yourself and introduce yourself or you can also introduce yourself in the chat. Okay, uh, now I would like to announce that uh, my colleague Benito will uh, uh, paste the link in the chat to the evaluation form. Dear room members, please uh, use the evaluation form to vote for uh, the companies. We will, uh, after the session, we will send them the feedback completely an anonymously just for, uh, for them to know where they have presented well and not so much. Now I have the uh, pleasure to invite the first presenting uh, company that is Offer from SOI. I will not stop sharing my screen. And Hello everyone, yes. pleased yeah. to be here. We can see your screen. The Thank you. Is okay. So, light-induced uh, disorientation is a harmful interrogation method. You put your subject in a windowless room and you alter the states of light and darkness and very quickly people lose all track of time, become highly disoriented, suffering severe psychological and physiological damages. In modern civilization, we are self-employing the exact same technology on ourselves. We stay in our poorly lit homes we walk into our poorly lit artificial uh, workplaces and we stay away from the sunlight. We uh, are lacking the solar stimulus, which governs our circadian rhythms and therefore our health. And uh, this is the problem that Solite is set out to address. And this is what we plan to do about it. So we have devised our patented, fully static, highly efficient solar harvesting system, typically placed on a rooftop or a sunny southern facade and effectively collecting sunlight throughout the day and channeling in real time without any transformation whatsoever into the building using a reflective light guide, which is very similar to an AC duct. We take this light and we bring it to where it is needed in the building. In this case, example, a basement. It can be an inner windowless room or a northern uh, poorly lit wing and we disperse this natural sunlight indoors. So that is our unique tool. We have developed this tool uh, for the various market segments. We have a large industrial collector used for large scale buildings. We have a mid-sized uh, solution for residential uh, installations with the current COVID uh, work from home, study from home has uh, even become more relevant. And last but not least, we have a small do-it-yourself solution for off-grid uh, cases and emerging economies as well. Uh, if you are a, a Solite customer, this is actually the table that should interest you uh, the most because it shows how we bring in much more light in the competition. 
Uh, typically, we are a new technology and, and therefore much more effective. You can see that we're almost three times bringing three times the amount of light per each euro of uh, system cost. And furthermore, our technology enables uh, customizing the heat intake. So we can be completely non-heating in warm climates and we in colder European climates, we can heat during the winter. So we are much more uh, energetically efficient. Uh, going beyond energy efficiency, uh, we believe that the main reason to deploy SOLIS is actually the health benefits. As I said before, this results in uh, faster uh, recuperation of hospital patients, significant improvement of workers and uh, student uh, memorizing and retention, increase in sales. All of these make SOLIS an ideal lighting solution for multiple implementations. As more and more people become aware of how they consume light and the quality of light, we have a dynamic and growing market. Currently, Solite is focusing more on the B2B segment, and we hope to cater for the B2C uh, segment with the right partnerships, who will be our distribution channels for those segments. In Israel, we are currently deploying Solis in uh, hotels. We've done hotels, we've done offices, we're doing educational facilities, industrial facilities with HP Indigo in Kiryat Gat and high-end residential. These are the type of projects that we realize. Here you can see the Kedma Hotel dining room. This being a desert installation, we customized the system to be completely non-heating. So for this uh, high thermal isolation uh, building, we delivered just the full visible spectrum without any heat whatsoever. And as I said before, we can heat in Europe if necessary. This is customizable in our solution. Here I'm showing our uh, residential uh, retrofit. This is a generic north side living room, which typically used uh, electricity throughout the day. We have deployed Solis here completely externally through an existing window so as to uh, not require any structural change to the building whatsoever and we've managed to elevate the light level so that absolutely no electric light is used throughout the day. And this is what we were seeking. So Solite is seeking market leaders in the uh, construction industry, in lighting, in energy efficiency and real estate management to partner with us and help bring our innovative Israeli technology and make it a household name uh, globally and in Europe specifically. Uh, we are closing a one million round and hoping for uh, co-investors as well. Please let the sunshine in. Thank you very much. Thank you, Offer, for the presentation. I will take over for the Q&A part. And I would like to welcome all the jury members to type down their questions into the chat so we have the order to invite them to ask. And Willem has the first question already. Willem? Yes, thank you for a very interesting presentation. Um, great concept, as it doesn't use energy itself, it just <laughs> passes it on. Um, can you say a little bit about the building permit requirements, especially in European countries? So we have been looking uh, at the situation in Germany, for instance, and we found that uh, uh, residents or, or buildings below 1,000 square meters are actually exempt from uh, 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 regula regulatory permits. And also uh, the, the external retrofit, which I showed was uh, specifically developed with our German advisor, because uh, make, as, you, as you probably know, making changes to buildings in Germany is very complex. And that is our strategy to avoid that situation. So that is uh, one solution we hope to employ in inner courtyards, we can also utilize, in many cases, uh, uh, service ducts, smoke extraction ducts. So we can uh, usually employ existing uh, structures to, to, to pass our light guides. Thank you. Gentlemen, the next question uh, uh, comes from Elizabeth. OK, so uh, that is no. actually what I've been talking about, but I, I will try to answer you. Uh, imagine a very large periscope, okay? What we do is a very large periscope. So you have our collecting unit on the rooftop with a clear view of sunlight, and it will channel this sunlight into a dark uh, section of your household. It can be a, a windowless room or a basement where you have no natural light, 
And that is basically what you do. It's a, it's a real time system. When you have sunlight outside, you have sunlight indoors in, in places in which previously you, you were lacking natural light, not enough windows or the wrong side of the building. That is what we do. Is it a system of mirrors or how do Absolutely. you- Absolutely, yes, it's, it's mirror-based optics. And I will immediately move on to the next uh, question. I did say it was patented, or at least I hoped I did. Uh, we have uh, already been granted uh, patents in the US and in uh, Europe, and we'll be adding a few patents, hopefully in the coming uh, uh, months, but it is patented technology. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, Offer, for answering the questions uh, so directly. We're spending can I time for sure. To the last, do we have time for the last question? Yes. Yes. So, I usually give the words to the jury member to ask you, so we, we shorten the distance, but go ahead. Okay. Uh, <laughs> go ahead. We, we are great believers in government subsidy, uh, not in the long run, by the way. We, we will be very competitive once we reach mass production, but as currently our costs are still a little bit higher because we're not in mass production. We believe that government subsidies are the way to bridge this gap and really bring excellent uh, uh, future, let's call it future value to our customers, to our first adopters. So we're looking for government subsidies at the moment. We have realized uh, several projects uh, in this manner, uh, and we believe that's probably the way to go. Uh, we have been uh, using European funds and, and also local Israeli funds. Uh, I don't know what other markets we, we currently, I will say what we focus on. We focus on the European market at the moment. Uh, we believe it's the strongest uh, potential due to very high awareness, high electricity prices, which has a strong effect on our ROI. And uh, that's the market we're looking for. Also, Australia is relevant and Japan. They will probably be the follow-up. The US is a huge market, but we think that they have a bit of catching up to do. So we are monitoring it, but our focus is on Europe at the moment. And uh, if I spin the question in the direction of uh, market in terms of segment, have you thought about vertical farming? Uh, uh, yes, very much so. But uh, for a strange reason, we never managed to realize any project in this segment. We have been looking at uh, 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 high intensity cannabis growth and also uh, various uh, uh, medical indoor farming utilizations. But uh, although the potential is there, because as you uh, correctly guessed, our light is also ideal for uh, indoor plants, uh, we haven't managed to, to realize uh, such projects, but it, it does seem like uh, we have uh, a lot to offer for this year. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you everybody for the questions. Thank you offer for answering those. Uh, we will move now uh, to the next presenter. Actually, in the meantime, we heard from our second presenter, um, Jan Andri, that he will be a little bit late due to technical reasons. So we're going to jump on the third presenter. And once uh, Jan Andri joins us, we'll present later. I would just want to indicate to the jury members that in the evaluation form, as a second company, you have the DHP company. You can put a zero everywhere and then uh, move to the next one so you can evaluate the third before the second, after that you can move back and correct the notes if you want to do so. So the time is to invite Marco and I stop sharing my screen so I can give him the floor. Yes, hello, hopefully you can see and hear me well. <clears throat> Very well indeed. Brilliant, so okay, so it's, it's Marco talking, uh, moving from Israel to next door Finland. So from South North. So for the can you, is, can you yeah. please share also your screen? Right, I tried to do it, but let's try it a bit better, harder. Let's try harder. Is it now? It's coming and we have it. So okay. the floor oh, is yours. Yeah. Thank you. So, okay, so uh, Fordek, uh, what is it about? about? So Fordek is a smart heating company. So we are heating buildings. So we are providing better indoor air quality with less energy. So it's energy efficiency business that we all know it's cool and it's, it's fantastic it's there uh, but why we are excited right now there is a new shark in the tank and uh, that is the eu climate action for very obvious reasons so currently cities are very actively looking solutions to cut the co solutions uh, sorry emissions and uh, and uh, then looking into 
a bit detailed where does all this CO2 coming from uh, in, in cities like Helsinki, uh, Stockholm, Copenhagen, Berlin, Warsaw, you name it, northern, eastern, and middle Europe. So heating takes a very big role there. So in Helsinki, it's something like 56% of, of the CO2 emissions. And then looking where this uh, uh, heating is going, it's, it's going to buildings which are already there if you're looking for the year target year 2035 when the city should be carbon neutral. So that is a real thing and that is moving now this industry faster than it used to be. And for that we have developed a solution that is Fordex smart heating that is providing right heating right time to every room in, in a building. And we are now specialized on water radiator based heating which is dominating in the markets that I, I just mentioned. We have a, a patented, uh, the patented solution in EU, so it's validated and it's there. So how does it work? So we take the industry standard smart thermostat. So we are not maker, we are buyer of the thermostat device. And currently we are using a German manufacturer for that one. So, and uh, what we have delivered is, uh, is kind of AI that enables the use of that uh, standard component in large buildings. So the AI learns uh, automatically uh, the heating uh, transfer or the performance of each and every room and then predictably provides the right heating to each, each room. And that's it basically. So, uh, so uh, uh, we also, also uh, collect lots of data and we analyze that and provide that as an kind of advisory on top of the automatic operation. So we provide advisory for the building owners if they should do something for the insulation or some other, other settings in the heating system. So, so we make the system work together better in the, in the buildings uh, that have air conditioning or ventilation system or then just heating. Uh, in practice, what does it mean? So, uh, so here is an example case. So, so like uh, city of Vanta owning a lot of buildings, of course, and this is one of their daycares. So the installation person swapped all the thermostats in two hours. So it's very simple to do. And then after heating season, what has happened was like we saved energy 18%, which is a good result. Uh, we got uh, uh, all the things like right. So, so like uh, it's like uh, the comfort was maximized while people were in and then less uh, energy consumed while people are not there. Uh, the data assistance maintenance, so that was uh, useful. So they got a lot of information for the building rationalized their own work. Teachers and kids were satisfied with the results and the overall result was very successful and they are now our repeating customer. So they have bought our system to new buildings and quite many of those already. Uh, what's our traction currently? So we're operating currently in Finnish markets commercially. So, so we are concentrating on B2B non-residential buildings and why customers are buying because they got better uh, improved tenant satisfaction, they save energy, which means CO2 reduction and they get their money back very fast and they can rationalize their own work. Uh, uh, so 600,000 sales to 50 customers so far, repeating a profitable model, and the customers are cities and private companies owning buildings. Uh, Money-wise, uh, so they get the payback and they got nice IRR over 10 years. How do we earn our money? So it's like uh, we are earning with the start component uh, with hardware installation commissioning, and then we have ARR that is, is like continuously collecting us as long as the customers are there and so far they are there. Uh, much more value for the customer than the acquisition cost and then excellently high uh, success rate in, in, in quotations. The market wise, so we are active currently in Finnish markets is about 1% of the opportunity. So we have uh, pr like proven the beachhead uh, and we have piloted uh, in Germany, in Hamburg and also Tangshan, China. Uh, also Sweden, Malmo. So like those are markets that we could go uh, so far, couldn't go there like, uh, like operationally. Competition wise, we have avoided the markets that are red hot with competition. So like residential, smart homes, and also new construction. We are concentrating on, uh, on, on like water-based, radiator-based heating, non-residential and the heating upgrade. And there we are very successful winning most of the cases really that customers end up like investing. Uh, our team, so, so we have, uh, have a good team that has taken us this far, but we also a little bit handicapped. So like we would need more strength to, to our sales capability and also, also in source some of our R&D work. Uh, uh, we have like uh, already COB, so, so chief of uh, the board, so one of the angel investors, and we also have a couple of other investors there, there in place, but now we are looking, looking a little bit like stepwise improvement for many of our activities. 
So what we want to do now next is like we want to change from pilot phase to real growth phase. So we've been selling for a few years already around 100,000 a year. Sometimes some years a little bit more, even like 300,000 is the best year, but uh, but about 100,000 level. So what we would like to happen now is like uh, the customers would dare to buy bigger amount of us from us. So like bigger deals, and then we should have a stronger balance sheet. And, and also in order to grow like internationally, we of course should be able to, on top of the technical solution, we also should be able to support the local businesses. So for that, we are looking for 2 million smart money, uh, preferred to be a private investment. Also, we could uh, also, also take some public support there, but, but I think the key is to get the uh, private investment in place. So, so that's it basically. Thank you, ready for your questions. Thank you very much, Marco, for the presentation. We already have received questions from Arthur. Arthur, would you like to ask them directly? Yes, Marco, thank you for the for the clear presentation. I was wondering, um, you know, how many sensors you need to upgrade a system, if it's one in the basement or, or one in every room, um, number one, and sort of number two, how you place these, you know, do you have an upfront capex for your customers and then have a monthly subscription model, or do you monetize by a percentage of savings and place the sensors for free. Yeah, thank you. So, so like uh, excellent. So, so uh, uh, the radiator thermostat. So it's uh, it's in each and every radiator. Typically, at least one in each and every room, and that is the only device that we need basically. So, so like uh, that is uh, and that connects automatically uh, to Wi-Fi network of the building, and then we got a connection to to our system, and it starts to work immediately. So, so like it's it's a one one device per room practically. Uh, we can have other sensors, but they are, those are not mandatory. Uh, uh, then uh, uh, the uh, uh, the uh, to be like uh, fast with answers. So, so like uh, the uh, uh, earning model. So, so what do we? How do we do? Is like uh, currently because we are, have been a startup, so we have needed to take uh, you know like all the costs plus some margin in the installation phase which means like uh, we typically hire a inst local installation person that goes and installs the stuff and, and we just send the, send the stuff and he goes there and then we pay him. Uh, and uh, then, then we got the, like uh, one new site installed and uh, then we charge that from, from the customer. And then the subscription is about 10% of the original installation cost that we take annually. So, so the customers can cut, cut this. It, some of the customers, yes, uh, would like to have this kind of a, like f as a service type of thing that we could uh, like uh, promise them some saving and then they would pay for that. But unfortunately, that needs some like uh, like monetary things which we currently don't have. So like uh, we are still in this kind of a startup mode. Okay, thank you. Great. Thank you. Uh, there's also a question from Katza. Yeah, thank you uh, for that presentation. Uh, Product seems very interesting, um, but it's good to understand a bit more about your customer segment. So, are your existing customers primarily property companies, or are you working more with councils? Yeah, right. So, so currently, we, the the kind of biggest segment what we are selling is like they are Finnish cities, like large cities of Finland. Well, large and large, but the Finnish cities like Helsinki uh, and and the neighboring like Espoo, Vantaa, uh, uh, also like Oulu and, and so on. So, like uh, typically. Uh, we are looking customers that own many buildings and those guys own like uh, hundreds to thousands of buildings so it means like it's it's repeating us so why did we select this particular segment is like we are a small team so like i think that's like normal business logic so like uh, like uh, it is uh, with the transaction is better and then the repetition probability is higher could we sell to other seg segments absolutely so like we have piloted also like residentials and uh, there it seems that uh, that we need to invest a bit more to get the sales done. So like selling to professionals is easier. Uh, we also also in uh, like co-sales mode into let's say in the in the service of, of the facility management companies like Core, but that's perhaps you are from Sweden originally, so like you might know them, and uh, and then the like ISS. So so they have sometimes included our service into their own offering for the same customer. So that is the other other thing, and this type of relationship we would like to establish more. And uh, and in export markets, we also believe that the starting point could be like we would go to this kind of similar segment, but then looking into into different uh, like markets, what, what is the kind of uh, let's say the easiest and the most most needing party that we could go for. Thank you very much, Marco. 
Uh, we are out of time for questions. I see that there are two more from Alberto and John. And I would like to kindly invite you to answer to them here in the chat, or okay. you can share one-to-one -one meetings and elaborate more there. Thank That's you right. once okay. again. Thank you. I now, I would like to invite the next presenter. This will be Jan Andre from DHP Technology. I will stop sharing and Jan, you can start sharing your screen, turn on your camera and microphone. Hello to everyone. Thank you. I'll start to share my screen. Victoria, can you see that now? Yes, could you please make it full screen? Okay, I go into full screen mode. Okay. Great, the floor is yours. Thank you. Hello to everyone. My name is uh, John Andre Diem. I'm a co-founder of uh, DHP Technology, and I will tell you today the story how we are going to unlock solar for big infrastructure and logistics areas. Uh, maybe you are familiar with the common uh, PV installation that we see on buildings and on open areas, but the big question we target is how to serve infrastructure and logistics with solar power. The electrification of mobility will demand a lot of decentralized renewable power, renewable fuel, but there is no solution as of today. And also in the area of uh, public service of water and wastewater treatment, uh, there are usually the biggest power consumer in a municipi municipality, but there is no solution as of today to uh, significantly generate decentralized solar power. We provide with our retractable solar folding roof a significant opportunity to change from power to fuel. We call that the power to X fuel hub. We can generate power for self-consumption. We can generate hydrogen or methane. So we provide a fully fledged solution for wastewater treatment infrastructure, which uh, is a huge market uh, in the EU, but worldwide. Uh, the, the, the total addressable market in EU country, according to research, is around 8.5 billion euro. It's completely untouched today. And we have proven with our concept, with already 10 delivered infrastructure projects, that this is a huge opportunity. We offer the same to the logistics because the system we provide is the only one that allows trucks in full length to uh, load, unload, and uh, move below the system. So we fully use, we fully double use that area. And we are fully integrated with charging solutions, not only from the operation side, but only regard, also regarding battery charging, high power charging, and this full service for a logistic uh, infrastructure. Uh, this total addressable market is a big bigger. We assess it around 80 to 90 billion euros in, uh, in the EU countries. Our key technology is an extreme lightweight construction, and this construction needs protection from heavy weather. We retract it at the wind threshold around 12 meters per second, and we avoid snow and hail. And as a trade-off, we receive wide distance between the axis of about 30 meters, and we can build uh, six meters above ground. We can build even higher, but six meters is a good height because every truck can move around below. This is built around the patent protected core technology, which the patent protects the retracting function. We use glass-free PV modules. We use Swiss cable core technology to move. We have an automated assembly line, which we have designed and implemented in Switzerland. And we use an energy management platform because we are not only producer of generated uh, solar power, we are also provider of energy management solution for that infrastructure area. Our go-to-market strategy focuses strongly on self-consumption and self-sufficiency for infrastructure, mobility, logistics. We offer solar as a service and pay per use for our customers. Our product at the end is a solution. It is, a, it is an integrated energy solution for the, for the project. 
and we work together with distribution partners, mainly big construction companies and EPC. Our after-sales service is based on that digital platform that I have mentioned already before, and we are provider for monitoring, service and maintenance, and energy management services. We are in the market for around four years. We have been uh, with an SME phase two project for two years, successfully uh, launched and um, now finished in February. We have around uh, eight and a half million turnover last year and delivered nine projects for the market. And we have around 32 projects in Switzerland and Germany in the pipeline for the next two to three years. We're looking for an investor who is not only investing in our company for the strong growth in the European countries and also abroad, but also investment in our team. My partner Andreas Zügli and I, we have a qualified management team and we have qualified employees, mainly engineers. And we use that money for infrastructure innovation on one hand and the other hand to increase the team further and to finance the market entry in the most important five to six European countries. I kindly thank you for your intention and uh, I invite you to bring solar to infrastructure with us. Thank you. Thank you, John Andre, for the presentation. I will have the pleasure to moderate the Q&A part. And I can see that the first question is already there for you in the chat. Willem, would you like to go next? Yes, thank you, John Andre. Um, I think it's a very interesting concept and looks very impressive. My key question is, which I didn't get yet from your presentation, what is the business case for the substantial extra cost for the retractability versus the benefits, the economic benefits for, uh, compared to a fixed roof? Um, our business case uh, takes the grid parity as a benchmark. So as long as we are providing energy below the cost of getting energy from the grid, the case is positive. Well, sorry to interrupt, but my question was compared to a fixed roof with solar panels. Um, so we are why around... to make the extra cost for make it retractable? What is the, the payback for that? The, compared to a fixed roof, we, we are approximately two times more expensive. Yep. And the payback times we have are around between 12 to 15 years. And the extra value that we can generate is the double usage of that area because on these areas, there is no fixed roof available. So you would have to build extra building to put solar panels and then we are around 30% less expensive. Okay, sorry, I still don't get why it has to be retractable. Is it for controlling the damage or for getting sunlight on the ground? It's because the construction has to be extremely light white to enable that wide distance between the, mm -hmm. the axis to have a huge area without any poles below. And this light white construction is not weatherproof, not fully weatherproof. So we okay. retract the system to avoid the static forces that are induced by storm, hail, or snow. Okay, and because it's the weatherproof. We can, yeah, due to that, we can build extremely light white and we have wide distances between the poles and we can go high above ground. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the clarification. I think it's, it's clear. Let's see who has the next question. Please type it down in the chat and it comes from Marius. Yes, thank you for this um, very interesting presentation. Um, you just said a little bit about it. I would go more into deep. How about extreme weather situations? experienced um, do you need do you need to adapt your system um how about the learning there and um are these systems already insured by insurance companies we as we are a alpine country we are uh, very experienced now with strong weather conditions in winter so we have no problems with uh, minus temperature, icing, snow, and so on. We have uh, uh, one, one project is in Davos, where the, the World Economic Forum usually takes place. It's about 1,500 meters above sea level. It runs very smoothly. Where we have some limitations at the moment is uh, going to very hot areas. We have requests from the GCC countries where we expect uh, temperatures above 50, even above 50 degrees or for the panels above 80 degrees. 
And for this kind of conditions, uh, we still need some engineering, but the protection function is also very interesting regarding storm or hurricanes, because once the system is protected, it is protected like inside a building. So it can withstand very strong wind weather conditions, but heat is still an issue for going to the, to the Sub-Sahara area or to the GCC countries, but everything that is direction cold is fine. Does that answer your question? Uh, yes, thank you. We have four years in the, we have four years of experience from the first project. So this gives us in the Swiss mountains. So we have several winter behind us and have good, good uh, data now to, to, to uh, explain that in, in details if you want to know more. Wonderful. Thank you, John Andre, for the answer. We have time for one last short question eventually. Whoever would like to ask it. Okay, it was pretty clear. Thank you so much once again, John Andre, for the presentation. I kindly thank you for your attention and wish you a good day. Thank you so much. I would like now to invite Pablo Ribeiro from Energiot to share with us his presentation. Hello, everyone. Well done. Can you see my screen? Yes, right? Yes, wonderful. The floor is yours. All good. So good morning. My name is Pablo Ribeiro. I'm the business developer of Energiot. We develop IoT devices without batteries for smarter grid. As you can hold on. As you can see here, uh, this is the way that the market do maintenance on high powered uh, grids. It's expensive, takes lots of time, and it's very challenging. There are lots of challenges for power operators. For example, 30% of their costs is due to the maintenance of the power lines. If you consider it only in Germany, they spent more than a billion euros per, per year only to balance the renewable sources on the grid. There are many challenges. And the way to solve this would be to apply the concept of Internet of Things on the grid. If we could monetize all the assets, you could solve this challenge. However, there is a catch because mostly of these devices are based on batteries. So can you imagine, can you, imagine you with the helicopter going to the power lines to change the battery of each device plus the environmental associated cost that you have? So at Energia, we found the solution. We developed a end-to-end -end IoT solution for a smarter grid. Our device don't need battery. It collects the residual energy from the magnetic field. It powers a set of sensors that collect key parameters, then send this uh, to the cloud where the operators can transform this in intelligence and use this to enhance their operation. This is due to the patent piezoelectric energy harvester that we have that allows our device to be way more affordable and way more flexible in the way that we can install it. The applications are many, so but I think the most important are fault detection to you avoid power cuts, the dynamic line rating that allows to integrate the renewable sources and to do predictable maintenance, which allows you to enhance and be much more efficient in the way that you deal with your, your assets. Basically, we're talking about cost savings and we estimate that 20% of the operation and maintenance cost could be saved. That would be 1.5 million years per 1,000 kilometers of power lines. The market's huge. If you consider only Europe and Latin America, we are talking about 16 million kilometers of power lines. It's almost 12 billion euros market. And if you get specific power lines with digitalized customers and critical situations, we still have almost 400 million euros as a target market to start. Of course, there are competitions. Uh, besides the battery ones, we have some competitions that use other sources of uh, getting energy from the grid. Uh, but basically, they are five times more expensive than our devices, and they can be uh, placed only on conductors. Our device can be placed in uh, substation, insulator, towers, and also the conductors. So we have much more flexibility in the way that we can monitor their assets. Our business model is hybrid. Uh, we sell the device for affordable cost and charge a monthly uh, fee to have access to the data and if the client wants to have access to an analytic platform. We start the sales doing a pilot with the client, which it, we can validate the use case for the client. 
and later we do recurrent sales over the years for increased the penetration on the grid of the client. We <clears throat> expect to break even in 2023 and have a turnover in 2026 of 23 million, starting focus first in Europe and then heading to Latin America where we have contacts as well. Uh, basically, uh, last year we validated MVP in our labs. Today, we are running two pilots, one with Iberdrola and another with Enercall in order to validate the application of our device in a real situation. Uh, we, are, we want also to, to sell more two pilots these years. Uh, we are raising 800,000 euros uh, for investment. And we are also already in the second stage of the HC accelerator to uh, pledge a grant of 2 million euros. Uh, basically, what we're going to use this investment for, what type of investors we want. We want to complete the team in order to deliver the pilots that we are working on. And at the final of this project, uh, we would have a commercial version of our device connecting with also uh, the software parts. Our team is very multidisciplinary, both in technology, innovation and business. We have uh, several awards. We were invested by Inno Energy and we are spin off of the biggest laboratory in Spain, the SIC. Basically, what we want to do here is to create a Google Maps of the electrical grid. We believe that our solution can impact both the grid operators and consequently help uh, the society and people to have access to better energy and to more affordable. So thank you very much for your time. And if you'd like to discuss further uh, investment opportunity, uh, please have my contacts here and you can connect with me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pavel, for the presentation. I would like to invite Alexander Stelchenko to ask his questions. Yeah, sorry, I'm not a jury member, it just was a very interesting technology, really wanted to ask uh, if your device acts as uh, like, um, if, it, uh, if it measures uh, phase shifts and uh, which general like uh, data can you collect? The data, the, what type of data we can collect? Yeah. So now we are doing, we can apply several types of sensors, but now we are doing temperature, uh, current, light, uh, humidity, and acceleration. And the current we can generate by the magnetic field also can calculate. But for example, there are clients that want to apply corrosion, uh, especially when the power lines that are on the coast. So that could be another type of sensor that we, we want to put in a new, uh, the new version of the device. But first we are focusing on these, on these parameters. Thank you. Thank you. The next question comes from Dylan. Yeah, thanks, Pablo. Very interesting approach to energy harvesting. Um, my question, and, and by the way, I think it's also great to focus on one application, which is monitoring the power lines. But in terms of the, the broad application, can you also work with uh, lower voltage solutions or is it only usable for the high voltage? We can work for uh, distribution system operators and, and also the transmission system operators. So we can work on the low voltage. Uh, the, the point is how much energy you have in the low voltage uh, in terms of the, the current that you have. Now with one of the pilots, we are working to even be able to go lower if there is lower energy available. Uh, but this is a trade-off and I think we are being very competitive compared to other, other solutions that you have seen that they can't use, they can't work without batteries on low voltage. So okay. we, we're going to get it there. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. And the next question comes from John. Yes. Hello and thanks for a good presentation. I was wondering about the communication technology that you're using. Do you need a base station close by or do they communicate with each other? So that's a great question because the, the clients love when we propose the, the solution. Because what's the challenge? Uh, some places on the power lines, you don't have coverage of 3G, 4G, or even a uh, gateway to work with a lot of, lot of one or seal forts. So what we can do is we have a, a basically a blockchain communication, node to node. So the, the device can communicate between each other in a proprietary network until you reach a gateway in a properly uh, uh, space and the gateway send information to, to the cloud. And there are different types of protocols that will depend of uh, what's available on the situation and what the cl client 
wants or how they work with. Very short follow-up question to that, if allowed. Is it, is it also prepared for a mesh network or is it just a linear network? A mesh network, that's a, I have to check with the, the okay. engineers to, to go specific. Okay, we can talk separately. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. There are also two questions uh, coming from Alberto. As I just wanted to understand which is your approach to the market. Uh, today, I assume you go directly. In the future, uh, how you are assuming to, to sell your devices, assuming that the sales cycle can be fairly long. Yeah, that is great. We still have to figure out what exactly are the sales cycle. For now, we are thinking we, for what to have experience between four and six months. We are doing directly sales now because it's part of the stage that we are as a company of product and market uh, validation, product market fit. Uh, but we have some partners, for example, uh, one of the partners that are working with us in, the, in one of the pilots, he could be a reseller. So we have other types of companies, IoT integrators and technology integrators, or, or companies that do the maintenance operation for the, the grid operators, that they could be representative. So we have these methods, but for now, for the like next year, we are focusing on the direct sales to learn more about how is the process and how are the clients. Great, thank you. Thank you. I would like to give the word to Kaiser for the last two questions for this Q&A session. Thank you. Thank you, Pablo. That was a very interesting um, presentation. My question would be, uh, how sensitive are the sensors? So can they, for example, pick up exactly uh, where there is a fault on the grid so they can tell if a uh, cable has fallen down, etc.? cetera? Yes, that, that's the purpose, yeah, to be very precise. If you compare, for example, with other software solutions that don't use uh, the hardware to monitor, that will be like our, our solution is way more precise than, than the other ones. So, so of even, course, even if you don't have it like on every cable as shown here in the picture, but you would have it. Yeah, uh, that depends of the application, it would depend of the client how he wants to monitor and how he wants to cover. Of course, if you had the, the purpose when we develop our device were to, to be able to offer it at a, a very affordable lower cost, especially to allow the client to do a global deployment. So the point is to have several devices. We, we calculate that would need four devices per kilometer as we have talking with uh, clients. So, but it depends, for example, if you have a power line that with three phases and you want to monitor the three phases, you have to, the three lines, you have to put a device in each line. If you want only to monitor the asset of the tower to see corrosion or any, any aspect, you only need one device there. So it would depend on the, the application that they want. Okay, I see. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pablo, for the presentation and answering all of the questions. There's interest from William Kura follow up, and I would like to kindly suggest you to use the one to one meetings for this purpose. Thank you once again. Now I would like to invite our last company to present. This is Bio, and instead of Pablo Vidarte, it, uh, the presenter will be Martin Kravchenko. Martin, I stop sharing now, and you can start sharing the screen. Perfect. Hi there, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, let me set up the screen. I think now you can see it perfectly. Yes. Perfect. Okay, good. Well, my name is Martin. I'm responsible for investor relations at, at Bio. BioSpy is a company born in Barcelona five years ago. And, um, and if a few numbers before, before we start. First of all, we are supported by the European Union with two Horizon 2020 grants, totaling 2.5 million euros. That was the primary source of financing for us during these last years, as we were principally focused on R&D. Uh, we already have three patents on the market. So one is active worldwide, another two are filed. And in terms of private funding, we have already raised uh, three rounds of private financing, totaling 1 million euros, and are currently raising our fourth round. Now, what do we do, what do, we do at Bio? Uh, we develop two unique technologies. Uh, the first and the most important one is generation of electricity from nature. Here, we break down the organic nutrients found in the soil and expelled by plants during their life cycle to create currents of electricity. And then the second technology that we have is converting plants into biological switches. I don't really have time to talk about both of these, so I'll just focus on the first one here. 
Now, uh, out of this uh, two technologies, we have three product lines uh, that we are developing. The first one is bio installations, uh, and it is already on the market. The next one is a biosensor, which is our flagship product and which will be released at the start of the next year. And then we have the bio panel, which is a generalization of, of the technology of the biosensor. Now, I'll focus on our flagship um, during this talk, uh, which is the biosensor. And uh, as I said, it is, uh, it is used in agriculture. So what problem am I solving here? Uh, here is an important problem for, for farmers of sensor powering. So every year farmers use more and more sensors on their fields to measure temperature, pH, humidity levels, other factors that may affect plant growth. And um, the problem is that uh, the most used uh, powering method for the sensors is actually chemical batteries, which on average have to be replaced uh, every 12 months, um, implying obviously financial, uh, logistical, but also environmental costs. Other solutions such as solar panels are usually uh, quite expensive and are not really uh, able to provide a, a good density of, of data uh, measurement across the field. Now, our solution essentially is a system which you are able to literally plug into the ground and all the energy needed uh, for the sensor to operate will be produced from the decomposition of organic materials dragged into our reactor uh, with the rainwater and the irrigation. So our computer breaks down this organic matter. In the process, it releases electrons, which we capture and power electronics, and also hydrogen, which is then combined with oxygen, producing water as a byproduct. Currently, in this form factor, we are able to produce 28 watts discharges of 100 milliseconds every day, which is about 3,000 times more than what is actually needed for a standard temperature sensor to make a reading. Now, what are the benefits of our solution? First of all, it's cost. I'll, call, I'll talk about it a bit later. Then the electrical generation is constant during day and night, irrespective of weather condition. It's more environmentally friendly as the primary component that we use is graphite, which is cheaper and easier to extract than lithium or silicon. And then every time farmers add organic nutrients to their fields, our batteries um, slash reactors are recharged. Now, if we compare the cost of uh, our solution, our reactor to, to other solutions, which are chemical batteries and solar panels, you can see that we are at least four times cheaper than what is already available on the market. In terms of the business model, we sell this technology to sensor manufacturers, which then integrate it into their own sensors, which are biological reactors, and then sell it to final uh, consumers, and we charge a royalty based on that. Um, if we look at, at the benefit to our clients, we can look at Biocrops and Canoe Group. These are two of our current partners and clients. Uh, as you can see, savings for them per year Talking about, for example, biocrops with 50 million hectares under management, it can be upwards of 1 billion euros per year. Now, in terms of the global market, so we are talking as well about 1 billion euros for, for the three different lines. In terms of competitors, um, as I told you, the technology is patented. Uh, the closest competitors could be Plenty and, and UTEC. Uh, however, these are, are working on, on, on technologies which are um, not really direct competition for us. Uh, another benefit of our solution is that we're actually carbon negative, which means that we are actively sequestrating CO2 by employing this technology, which is obviously another benefit. In terms of the roadmap, um, as told you, one, on li one line is already on the market. The biosensor is being launched uh, at the end of the start of next year, and then comes the biopanel, our third line. In terms of revenue, we have uh, um, brought in in sales about 100,000 euros during the last two years. Um, the COVID impacted our first line, um, and, um, and then this year we, we do hope to, to bring it back to up to 1 million euros uh, in revenues. Currently, we are a team of 15 members uh, with a quite nice mix of, of nationalities. We have engineers from NASA and other research centers uh, working with us, and we are currently raising our fourth round of 1.5 million euros. It's already about 70% subscribed, and we are planning to close it in July. So if anyone is interested, obviously write to me and uh, we'll be able to, to progress faster on that one. Um, you can contact the CEO directly or me, which is martin at bio.tech. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for the presentation, Martin. We already uh, have the first question coming from Vila. Yes, thank you very much, Martin. A very interesting uh, presentation and concepts and great, of course, uh, as a solution for many different markets. Um, can you say a little bit about the manufacturing process that you need for those reactors? How um, can you yeah, mass produce them? 
yeah, in terms of manufacturing process, I don't really have much information on that myself. Um, okay. I will be able to connect with, with the technical team. But essentially, the process is, is quite simple. Um, as the production cost that we, we are getting is um, about four times cheaper than for the chemical batteries. And as we are using graphite, which is more easily available than, uh, than lithium. Okay. Thank you. There's a question, uh, questions from Alberto. Yes, um, in your presentation, I've not uh, focused enough on who are your, your, uh, your customer, really your primary customers are end users or uh, system integrators or large companies that want to adopt the, the, the sensors. Yes, so we are, we are targeting sensor manufacturers, such as, for example, the case of our partner, Biocorp Science. Um, which, which uh, buy our technology and then integrate it into their own sensors uh, to sell to final consumers, which are the actual farmers. So all of our, all of our business model is essentially focused around IP and, uh, and, and selling that technology and scaling faster. So you're not expecting in any case to manufacture the, the sensor no. part of the no. sensor? No, just no. Not, not, no. Uh, not, not in the biosensor line and not in any other lines. We have decided to focus uh, on the license model for all, for all the business, business lines. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions from the expert jury members? Yes, I can see Elizabeth just uh, shared her. Yeah, hi. Um, can you give us a bit more information about the application? So I understand you use it as a switch, um, but which other applications do you see there? Uh, well, for the biosensor, we're not really using it as a switch. It's essentially a biological reactor, which is able to power uh, different types of sensors, temperature, pH, humidity sensors, you name it. Um, the other technology that we have is also biological switches, but that's for different business line. I didn't really have time to talk about that one here. But if it powers a sensor, um, then it needs a reliable touch, or um, otherwise the sensor doesn't get uh, reliable electricity. Uh, what, what do you mean reliable touch? Um, I understand it's activated by touch by a living. Uh... No, 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 no. So this, these are sensors in agriculture, which essentially make, uh, for example, 10 readings per day, right? And, uh, and our reactors essentially produce their energy, store it, and then when the sensor needs it, they, they consume it on a regular basis. Okay, so it's a different product line. Yep, yep, that's, that's bio-installations. That's, uh, that's another product line. Thank you, there's time for one more uh, question, if anyone would like to ask it. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Martin, for uh, your presentation and answering all of the questions. Perfect. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you very much uh, to all the participants that were here uh, today in this session. My colleague, Denitza, will now share with you a link to a satisfaction survey. Please uh, share, share with us your feedback. It's important for us to improve for future sessions. Thank you so much also from my side. I would like just to remind you that this afternoon between 6 and 7 p.m. we are having the one-to-one -one meetings and you are welcome to use them as well on Friday in the afternoon. You can easily send messages through the platform in the one-to-ones and of course communicate with each other. Thank you everybody, have a lovely afternoon. Goodbye. Thank you, bye-bye.